Hi there, welcome. This is Vince of VincePrep.com and Agos Admissions Consulting. I'm going to give a very, this will be a long video. Um, I want to, in the interest of time, get through my analysis of both of the Kellogg essay questions for the incoming class of 2018, those of you applying now to start your Kellogg MBA in 2016. There's also a reapplicant essay. There's some essays you must write if you're applying to a dual degree like MMM, but for today I'm just going to talk about the two main essays. The first essay, essay one, the question is, leadership and teamwork are integral parts of the Kellogg experience. Describe a recent and meaningful time you were a leader. What challenges did you face and what did you learn? 450 words or less. I'm pretty sure they're serious about this word limit. 450 words or less. Other schools give you 500 words for, for example, MIT has a sort of leadership type essay, but they limit you to 500 words. Kellogg, I think, very much wants to see your fresh, original idea, not just a copy and paste from another school. The reason for that, I think, is very logical. Kellogg's Admission rate is about 20%. It changes a little bit year by year, but they, they admit around 20% of, of the people who apply there, and their yield is only about 60%. So uh, four out of the 10 people that they uh, accept don't come. Only six out of the 10 that they accept do come to Kellogg, as compared to Harvard, which has about a 90% yield rate, nine out of 10 admitted to Harvard go to Harvard, 8 out of 10 admitted to Stanford go to Stanford, even 65% last time I checked, a little bit higher than Kellogg, if admitted to Kellogg and MIT, go to MIT. So Kellogg is trying to defend its um, yield, essentially, by giving original questions and with different word limits than other schools. These are not mistakes. These are intentional strategies, I believe, taken by the admissions director. Their admissions director, Beth, has written um, a very good analysis on her blog, and uh, crediting, and uh, with full credit to Beth, I'm gonna essentially paraphrase or analyze what she's already told you. Um, I never claim to know more than the admissions directors about their own program. And so here's her, here, are, here is Beth's essay analysis, um, paraphrased by me. Um, she's basically saying, we can see your resume and your activities. Maybe you were the president of every single one of the things you've done. Um, but we still want to know more about uh, your leadership. She talks about recent and meaningful. MIT, to their credit, is very precise and specific. They say it must have occurred within the last three years. Um, Kellogg doesn't do that. Recent, it's a little more vague, but I would say three years is a pretty good benchmark. Some of you might really want to write about something in college, um, but as, as Beth says here, before college, probably not a good idea. Something from high school, you know, maybe not. Um, so the question, the, ex the example that you're going to choose might be from work, it might be outside of work, but either way, you want it, you want it to be something that shows leadership not just you, the example she talks about is you know, running a marathon. It's not you against yourself, or you, know, or, or, or you against nature. Um, you know, me at my age running a marathon would be both me against myself and me against nature, trying to see if I could survive. She really wants to see leadership of a group of people. As you know, T Kellogg is very famous for its highly collaborative, student-driven culture. The alumni at Kellogg, if you've ever met any, if you have friends who went to Kellogg, you know that they love their school um, because the school gives them lots of opportunities to take leadership and take ownership and feel very involved and very committed in the school, including interviewing you. The alumni around the world, I'm doing this video in Tokyo, Japan, the alumni here in Japan are incredibly organized, incredibly transparent, easy to find, very open group of people. Um, and if you apply to Kellogg, 
from Japan, as with other countries around the world, it is highly likely, almost guaranteed, you'll have the chance to interview. Other schools, the interview is highly selective. More than half the people uh, who apply to Harvard are not invited to interview. But with Kellogg, it's 90 plus percent. They want to meet you. They want to tell you about their school. They want to get you as they want to let you know, no matter what, whether or not you get admitted to Kellogg and whether or not you go to Kellogg, they want you to come away from the experience feeling like, wow, Kellogg, what a great school and what a nice person for giving me 30 minutes or more of his or her time to tell me about the school. So Kellogg's is a very team-oriented place. Um, and so one big hint that Beth is giving you here in her analysis is that um, we want to understand the challenges for your team. She says, you were a leader, there must have been some other people involved. The challenge is what tests you as a leader. And then she gives you some suggestions. Was it a lack of resources? A last minute change of scope? An unclear goal? A mistake for which your team had to take accountability? If you've led people, then I bet you faced an obstacle that would make great essay material. So she's really sort of encouraging you to talk about the time in your life recently, again, I would say, using MIT's advice, not so much Kellogg's, but three years, maybe four, um, and if, it's, if the thing you did in college was just simply so amazing, um, and you must talk about it, go ahead. Um, if you do that, though, in Essay 2, which I'll talk about in a minute, make sure you emphasize your professional growth in Essay 2 if you choose uh, a non-work story, uh, a non-work team leadership story here for Essay 1. Um, the other, the other advice that I think is very good advice comes from a friend of mine who, from AGAC, which is the Association of International Graduate Admissions Consultants, a very good friend, Scott, who wrote a very, who's a Kellogg grad himself, and he wrote a very good analysis of this essay question um, on his blog, and I'm going to, again, giving full credit to Scott. Um, Scott's advice in terms of structuring your essay, I think, is very good advice, which is to use a simple SAR framework, S-A-R. MIT, where incidentally, where Scott, I'm talking too much about Scott, but where Scott did his, Scott went to MIT undergrad, Kellogg for his MBA. MIT MBA program encourages you to tell stories in your interview using what they call STAR, um, situation, task, action, result, S-T-A-R. Um, Scott's advice here, and I think it's very good advice, is to, simple is always better, um, SAR, situation, action, result. In terms of framing your story, I think that's a very, logical situation. Uh, what was the situation, the challenges you faced, the steps you took to persuade people, what was the turning point, you know, how did you get someone who was saying no, no, no to agree and say yes, um, what was that turning point, what was it actually, was it data, was it simple persistence, um, was it involving an outside person who was trusted by this, Mr. Did, you, did you get Mr. No to say yes? by bringing in someone you know, at his same level, a trusted peer, to essentially say the exact same thing you were saying. And when you say it somehow, Mr. No, not willing to listen, but when his colleague or someone his same age or same level of authority says it, oh, what a good idea. You know, was it a matter of changing the messenger, keeping the same message? I don't know, what was the turning point? So you wanna show the turning point in terms of your action steps. And finally, the result. Um, but, but again, with Kellogg, it's, the, the result is, is important. It should be something impressive. Um, you got, the, you know, you closed the sale, you got the deal, you changed uh, no into yes, you impacted your organization, you motivated other people. But m even more than a big, you got an award, even more than a big external result, um, as, as Beth says, she wants to hear most about what you learned. I think that for Kellogg, Kellogg is absolutely, because it's a team-oriented school, self-awareness is really, really important. And so what you learned about yourself is, I think, the most valuable uh, result or conclusion. Let me, let me close with one more tip and, and I'm, today is sort of AGAC day. I'm wearing my AGAC shirt and I'm giving, I'm giving a lot of love and, and showing a lot of, of, of respect to my AGAC colleagues. 
one of the founders of AGAC is Clear Admit, and their website is full of amazing information. Um, and this is something that, that comes from their website, which, which they, I presume, found from, uh, from Kellogg, and they put it up uh, nicely on their, they shared this on the Clear Admit website. This is Kellogg's leadership assessment. This is something that your recommenders for Kellogg are gonna have to uh, fill out. You know, other schools, Harvard, for example, uh, Wharton as well, when your recommender evaluates you according to certain criteria, when he rates your performance, it's just numbers, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and maybe each number has a little bit of a, a very brief description, like five would be sort of like exceeds expectation, you know, top 2% or something, and then four would be sort of in the top 10% of your peer group and, you know, very good, and then, you know, it's sort of like a grade, if you will. It's like five is, let's say, an A, B, uh, four is, let's say, a, a B, three is, let's say, a C, whatever, D, and I don't know, maybe F, hopefully not F. Um, Kellogg goes one step beyond simply numbers and sort of undefined, let's say, percentages or just sort of vague general terms. They actually force your recommender to read <laughs> these little tiny boxes and think about it. This is, an, this is a qualitative assessment. This originally came from Stanford. Um, I first noticed it back in 2007. I'm showing my age here. Um, at that time, as I understand it, Stanford hired a, cons a leading top three consulting firm in the U.S. Um, to analyze and assess their admissions process. And this was, I think, one of the, the takeaways or the deliverables from that consulting company gave to Stanford effectively a, a leadership assessment grid. It's a qualitative assessment, not just checking numbers on you know, tick boxes. Um, so it's a lot more work for your recommender. My, my, my point here, though, is for you, in your essay, when you talk about how you grew or how you grew as a leader, take a look at, at this language because it's, it's expensive language. They paid a consulting company for it. Um, it's valuable language. It's good stuff. So you could show, for example, um, you know, as a, as a leader, you know, I used to simply assign tasks to my team members, but I learned how to actively engage people. Um, you know, and, and, and you know, I, I started publicly thanking my team members um, and rewarding them, you know, with, uh, you know, in, in a group setting without embarrassing them. But, you know, I started giving out awards or special recognition instead of just, de you know, I used to always just delegate. Okay, you do this. I was sort of a taskmaster, but then I became more of a, of a motivator. I, I'm not exactly suggesting you use these exact words. It's probably too perfect and they'll recognize it. From their own application but use tools like this to show growth um, don't just say i learned a lot but show us how you learned and not just you learned um, um, that something is important but you actually learned how to motivate people in some meaningful way all right um i'm gonna pause here for a minute and i'll make part two of this video which will be talking about um essay two that'll be a separate video i changed my mind um, this, this is a bit unrehearsed, and when I'm unrehearsed, I tend to talk a lot. So I've gone over my allotted time. So I'm going to close off, sign off for now. As always, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You'll be the first to know when I've uploaded a new video. Thanks again for watching. Best of luck with your Kellogg essays, and bye for now. We on a war tour with my and my man Going each and every place with the mic in their hand Chinatown, Spokane, London, Tokyo uh -huh.